So if you watch this channel, uh, you'll see that I like to use Wii U games and play them on stream. And uh, basically, I figured this video I'd go over how I uh, emulate the Wii U gamepad. Uh, the Wii U gamepad is a unique piece of hardware. Uh, it's kind of an odd combination where it has a touchscreen, gyro, as well as regular controls. Uh, so I figured I'd go over how I actually emulate the Wii U gamepad because it was kind of not obvious to me and I tried a bunch of different things. So I figured I'd go and share that for the world. Uh, but briefly, why do I use Simu? Uh, there's a bunch of different reasons, but the primary reason is for modding. Uh, it's easier to mod than an actual Wii U, so you can see here I have Linkle and Wind Waker HD, just a simple reskin, and it kind of changes up the game, not a whole lot, but just enough that you're uh, kind of wanting to replay it. And it also allows for ultra-wide aspect ratios, which I'll likely show later, but uh, for the purpose of this video, just to keep it simple, I'd keep it in the regular widescreen. Uh, in the slider of the video, there should be timestamps, and I will basically have those for the, um, basically how I did gyro and how I did touchscreen, as those are kind of the two main challenges. Um, so yeah. Okay, so the first thing you kind of have to emulate with the Wii U is the touchscreen. Uh, many games require it, some don't, but for stuff like Xenoblade Chronicles X, or the Zelda games, they highly benefit from it. Uh, Xenoblade X is actually not entirely playable without it, um, because it's the fast travel system. But for this, I'll use Wind Waker as a, it's kind of a simple interface to see. So what I have is a little seven inch uh, monitor, and originally that's what I was using for the display. So the first way you can use the touch screen is to actually use a mouse. So I'll show you here, I have my G502, you can uh, click and drag the item into the different item slots. And this works with any monitor, it doesn't have to be touch, it can just be a regular second monitor. Which isn't a bad idea if you just want a quick and dirty way to play it. But for me it always felt weird having to reach for the mouse and find where the mouse is on screen rather than just touching. So that's why I bought this little monitor. And it has a touch screen, I had to 3D print the case for it so it's kind of a uh, farce and it was kind of expensive. But what this allows me to do is uh, drag the item into the item slot. But I wasn't entirely happy with that either. Because you can see, once I get to the edges of the screen, it starts to desync. And it uh, doesn't really follow my finger. And that's because this driver board, uh, the touchscreen thinks it's the main monitor. And since my main monitor is a different aspect ratio, it messes up the uh, touch inputs. And this gets only exasperated further. Uh, I'll show you later in the video, but once you put games in ultra wide on Simu, the touch screen gets even more desynced, so you kind of have to adjust to that too. So what I actually ended up using was my Android tablet. There is a piece of software called Super Display, and it acts as a second monitor for your PC, so it just plugs in via a USB cable, and this is a Tab S6 Lite, so it comes with a uh, S Pen. And that can basically act as a regular uh, stylus. So this touchscreen is much better on Windows. Um, the software they've done for this is really well done and it follows your tracking pretty well. Um, I've had issues with this pressing smaller buttons on the screen. doesn't always register. It's kind of a uh, low resolution touch zone. But this I've never had issues with. Uh, except for when I go ultra wide in games. Um, I'll show that later in the video. But I highly recommend this. It's called Super Display. Um, it works on uh, Android devices. I'm not sure about iOS. The only issue is it costs about $10 before tax. So I ended up paying about 15 Canadian. But uh, compared to $15 for a uh, app on a tablet versus $100 for this secondary monitor, uh, I'd highly recommend going with this touchscreen instead. Yeah, so next I will move on to gyro. Now, the second thing you have to emulate in uh, Simu is the gyro. Uh, you don't need gyro aim. Uh, most of the games you can do it without, but certain games like Splatoon or even aiming in the Zelda games highly benefits from it. So uh, I have my Xbox controller here just to show you can use regular controllers. 
Like you can see me walking. I can use the telescope. You can move around the telescope. It's not like you're limited to using gyro. However, um, it doesn't feel right within the games. So what I did was uh, I bought a Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. Uh, this actually has gyro built in. It's the first Nintendo controller with gyro, or regular Nintendo controller with gyro. Um, unfortunately, the Wii U Pro Controller doesn't have gyro, so it has to be a Switch Pro Controller. Um, and that actually connects to a PC really well. It just connects easily through the Bluetooth options. Um, and it basically connects via uh, Bluetooth and allows you to use gyro. So... Here we have the uh, CMU input settings. So this is for the Switch Pro controller. So what you'll see is the emulated controller is a Wii U gamepad and the controller itself is a Nintendo Switch Pro controller. Uh, to actually enable gyro in CMU uh, 1.26, we go to settings and we use motion. Uh, this is where we can set our rumble to. We can set that to 100 and you can set your axes as well. And then you can basically just go through and set up the uh, button configurations too. So you can see A, B, X, Y, L, R, uh, Z, L, Z, R, start, select. Uh, you have your click, up, down, left, right, click, up, down, left, right. And then you have your D-pad. And you can basically save that. And if you go in game, close out of that, go to full screen, you can see here that we can actually rotate the controller. So, if you tilt the controller down, it'll tilt. If you tilt to the right, it'll tilt. So your gyro aim actually works. Now with this, you can still use the right stick to look around, but it makes it way simpler for games that require, or not require gyro, but are benefited from it. So you can make little fast movements. Uh, this is especially useful in Splatoon, but, that's the controller I recommend. Uh, you can get, I believe the PlayStation 5 controller has gyro, and I believe the PS4 as well. But I've never owned a PS4 or PS5 controller, so I don't know if the process is the same. But the Nintendo Switch Pro controller is pretty simple. You just add it via Bluetooth in your uh, device manager or the Bluetooth settings in Windows, and uh, you can basically do that. Now, all you have to do is just, there's a button on the back of it here. Um, I don't know if it'll focus on it. Yeah, right there where my finger is. Um, there's a tiny, tiny little button. Um, it's not focusing, sorry about that, but uh, that's your sync button. So that'll turn off the controller, but if you hold it, it'll actually put it in sync mode, and you hold it, go to your Windows device settings, and you connect it via there. So I'll show that in a second. Yeah, so you can see the controller is in a uh, sync mode right now. You can see the buttons or the lights flashing like that. And you can see the pro controller shows up in the Windows settings. So you basically just click on that. It'll connect. It's ready to go. Click done. We can see it's paired right here. Um, and from there, you should be able to recognize it in Simu and use it for the gyro aim. So you can see, just from there connecting, it works right away, since it remembered my settings. Yeah, so I said I'd go over the desync a bit more with the touchscreen. Uh, so here's an example of Xenoblade Chronicles X. It's an ultra-wide, so there's kind of some funky things, but for the most part, it works pretty well. And if you've watched the streams, it's uh, pretty much gone without a hitch. But, uh, you can see here... When I touch something on display, you can see it kind of has a weird overlay. It doesn't always line up, and sometimes the inputs are not entirely registered. And this is one that I highly recommend having a stylus for, because it makes it so much easier to just tap on the screen and actually uh, tap where you're wanting. Uh, because in a smaller display like the 7-inch uh, display I have, I'll move it over here, but... Um, well, it would help if it wasn't in an enemy battle, so we're, we'll run out of that pretty quick. Yeah, so you can see here, it's so much smaller, and it makes it uh, almost impossible to actually touch. You can see I can 
touch them, but it, uh, with the way I have it, it makes it really annoying. And you can see that one's not actually registering. Um, it takes a little bit, and you have to kind of touch it multiple times for it to work. Um, another option too, just use a mouse. Uh, this is the most accurate, but for me, it kind of feels odd to be uh, using a mouse to click around. Um, so, realistically, if you want accuracy, go for a mouse. If you want um, actual kind of relatively to the experience, I highly recommend if you have an Android tablet with a pen. Um, it might work on Apple devices. I don't know because I don't have an iPad with a stylus. Um, but if you have that, try it out. Let me know how it works in the comments. And if you kind of found this video a help to you, um, I know for me it was kind of hard to find what setup worked for me in Simu. Um, subscribe to this channel. I want to post more stuff about it, and I want to do more streams about uh, games like this. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching.